Private Space, Space Travel in the 21st Century, a senior group documentary by Jose Medrano, Gershon Sanchez, Christian Pritchard, Pedro Caldera, and Christopher Salazar. One of these seven young men will be the first American into space. Lift off, the noise reaches 120 decibels, and it's been compared to 8 million hi-fi sets playing at once. Great. Ten minutes to the touchdown. And the final liftoff of Discovery. Three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavor. After 30 years and 135 flights, NASA has decided to close down the Space Shuttle program. The yearning for exploration is hardwired in human beings. It is this yearning that led the Wright brothers to build the first airplane, the Russians to launch Sputnik, and the Americans to land Apollo 11 on the moon. The encounters they experienced through these voyages were incalculable in value and led to more humans pushing the limits of their explorative capabilities. It is this same desire to explore that will cause spaceflight to be dominated by private companies who will offer opportunities to citizens to also experience space, which was once only felt by elite and trained NASA astronauts. We interviewed Kevin Rohr, the Chief Strategic Communications Director at NASA's Neil Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. We just got done recruiting for our next class of astronauts, and we sent out an application, had over 18,000 people apply. Minimum qualifications to be an astronaut, you got to have a technical degree in science, math, or uh, some type of engineering, and a couple of years of experience. After that, we'll train you. Meet Mike Melville. Despite being a high school dropout, he was the first man, well, astronaut, to enter space on a 100% privately funded program. Under the guidance of team leader Bert Rutan, on June 21st, 2004, at the age of 64, he, with the help of the team at Skilled Composites, with the financial backing of Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, flew a spacecraft into outer space and returned safely back to Earth. I was the first guy to fly into space that didn't use any government money. It was all private funding. There was nothing that we got from the government. We didn't use any of their resources. We didn't use, we didn't buy a rocket motor from them. We didn't buy an airplane from them. We had to do all of that ourselves. We designed the, air, the mothership. We designed and built the spaceship. We designed and built the rocket motor and did all the testing of that. And that was the biggest problem, just, just getting a rocket motor to work took us two years of testing. On May 1996, the $10 million Anzari X Prize was created to incentivize a manufacturer of a reusable, privately financed ship to fly 63 miles above the Earth's surface twice within two weeks. On October 29, 2004, Mike Melville flies his space and back for Flight 1. On October 4, 2004, Brian Beanie does the same for Flight 2. Skilled Composites goes on to win the $10 million Anzari X Prize. My name is Matthew Steinmetz. I'm the project engineer and program manager, or one of the project engineers and program managers at Scaled Composites. When asked if this would have happened without the Anzari X Prize, Scaled Composites engineer sure, so Matt Steinmetz said the following. The X Prize. I think the answer is yes. Um, Bert was always, you know, scheming for a way to go to space, even as far back as before I started at Scaled, you know, 20-ish years ago. Does NASA ever plan on offering uh, tickets to private citizens to fly into space? Some in the private sector claim that this will be happening soon with many private companies. Apparently the Russian space program already does this. The Russian Space uh, Federation has done some privatization of their um, capsules. And this country, though, that's not our policy and that's not our direction. We have no intent to privatize space and to go into the space tours and industry. Um, there are other companies looking to do that, and we just look forward to them making space accessible to all. Scaled Composites exchanged information of these flights to Branson's Virgin Galactic. Branson made plans to make the spacecraft bigger and carry passengers.
Virgin Galactic has sold more than $700,000-$250,000 tickets for future flights. Several celebrities have already signed up, including Justin Bieber, Ashton Kutcher, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Stephen Hawking. When we asked former NASA Chief of Staff and current Virgin Galactic CEO George Whitesides about their space tour prices, he responded with the following. The only uh, other way to get a ticket to space right now is you can go to the Russians and, uh, and buy a ticket from them, and that costs about $70 million. And I think Richard Branson's long-term vision is to bring the, the ticket price down even further. You know, a lot of these things have often started at a higher price point, like transatlantic travel, you know, started off at something that was around $100,000 in real, real dollar terms. And then now you can buy a ticket for like 500 bucks. Branson is moving ahead despite the crash of Spaceship Two on October 31st, 2014 where co-pilot Michael Alsbury died in a test flight. Another South African native, Elon Musk, the founder of PayPal and Tesla Motors, has founded SpaceX, a company that already flies rocket shipments to the International Space Station for NASA, and has plans privately to be in space in five years and to launch a trip to Mars by 2025. Although NASA, for the time being, has no intent on privatizing its space flights, they are open to the idea and encourage the ability for citizens to be able to experience space through private companies like SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, and Scaled Composites. It is the same intent that has opened the doors for many companies and individuals to proceed in their endeavors to enter space. The reality is in 10 years we'll see people going to space quite frequently. Um, and as you see, you know, uh, Blue Origin has just flown. You've got Elon Musk doing, uh, you know, doing stuff on the orbital level. So there's a lot of private ventures that didn't exist when we flew this vehicle that are now starting to gain some steam and they're really kind of stepping into prime time. So I think you're only going to see this kind of uh, start to, to accelerate. So 10 years, you know, you'll start to see the beginnings of it for sure. And it'll just grow exponentially from there. So really exciting time. However, there are critics of private companies taking over space travel. The space entrepreneurs may claim that they can send people into space for a fraction of the previous cost, but they have not yet proved it. As the Obama administration encourages the private sector to be more involved in spaceflight, NASA legends who walked the surface of the moon, such as the late Neil Armstrong and Eugene Cernan, have voiced their opposition. Now is the time to overrule this administration's pledge to mediocrity. C.J. Sturko, a former NASA astronaut who participated in four space shuttle missions to the International Space Station and who is now a Virgin Galactic test pilot, gave a different perspective to Eugene Cernan. So I think it gets back to our statement about, you know, if you don't, aren't willing to take some risks, then you're never going to accomplish anything. You know, the aircraft are going to sit in the hangar, they're never going to fly, and you're just going to be right where you're at. Space travel has now slipped the surly bonds of government. Presidents, Congress, NASA bureaucracies. Its future will now be driven far more by a competitive marketplace with its multiplicity of independent actors, including deeply motivated, financially savvy, and visionary entrepreneurs. Professor Stephen Hawking says it best. We are entering a new space age, and I hope this will help to create a new unity. Space exploration has already been a great unifier. We seem able to cooperate between nations in space in a way we can only envy on Earth. Perhaps one day, we will be able to explore new places encounter new concepts and exchange the information we have learned through the opening of private space. This can only be accomplished when government and private sectors work together. It is clear to us from our research that we as teenagers will be able to one day as private citizens travel to space with our grandchildren without having to be an elite member of society such as a celebrity or a millionaire. Just as airplane travel slipped from the government in the 20th century, Spaceflight will follow the same progression in the 21st century. Thin blue line, the black of space, and the bright sun shining on the Earth. And this is the Owens Valley, this is Mount Whitney. That is uh, San Francisco Bay, Bakersfield's down here. Mojave is just a little bit south of there.